So this is how I make my sourdough bread. So I start off with flour. So I use four cups. I just use any cup that I have. I'm not that fussed. I'm not that precise about my measurements. So one, two, three, four. Then I add some gluten. I use a vital wheat gluten. I find that that really helps um, aerate and rise the bread. So about half a cup of gluten into the bowl. Salt's really important. I use three teaspoons of pink salt. Give that a little mix. And then I add my starter. So this is my starter. It uh, was fed yesterday, so it's had its time to rise up and go down. So it's had 24 hours. I pour nearly all of that into the mixer. And what I'm left with is about sort of a centimetre and a half, two centimetres in the bottom. And then I feed that with a cup of flour. and enough water to make that into a paste so I give that a good mix and once um, I've let that be mixed I'm either going to leave that out for another 24 hours so I can make a bread tomorrow or if I've got enough bread then I'll just put that in the fridge and that will sit in the fridge for about a week before um, it needs to be fed again. If I leave it for as long as a week, then I find that I need to um, just tip most of it out, give it a feed and leave it for 24 hours before I use it uh, because it's sort of, sort of used up all its nutrients by that stage. Okay, so the lid just goes back on that and pop that to one side. Then I'm going to make the dough. So I find that um, really it, it doesn't matter how wet or dry your dough is. The, the wetter it is, the more hydrated, um, the more it can sort of collapse when you're cooking it if you don't do it in a Dutch oven or you can make it a bit more stiff. So I don't know that's just over half a litre. I'm going to pour that in. And I'm going to start mixing that. So I'm going to mix that for seven minutes. Just adding a bit of water at a time. So yesterday I made a very hydrated dough, today I'm going to make it a little bit drier. So I just uh, use my eye because depending on the weather it can affect how much water the, the flour is going to absorb. So yeah, I use most of that. So this is a fairly hydrated dough. I'll just bring the camera closer. You can see that mixing. So that's going to come together and then that should end up having quite clean sides on the side of the bowl as well. So by mixing it for seven minutes, you get the auto leaves which is um, where the gluten starts to stretch. So I'm just going to do that and get back to you. Okay, so this has been going for seven minutes. So I'm going to turn it off. And you can see it's quite stretchy. This is a wetter dough than you'd make if you were mixing it by hand. Um, so now I'm going to take it out of the bowl. Now what I like to do is put it into a plastic container because um, that creates a really humid environment for the rising. So to take the dough out, if you wet your hands, the dough will just slide off the hook without sticking, like so. We'll get rid of that. Then I just oil the container quite generously and rub that around. And I'm going to take the 
go out and I've got my scraper so I'm just going to scrape that into the box and again if I wet my hands And just push that out to the sides, squish it down. You can see hardly anything on my hands. Next I'm going to put the lid on and I'm going to put that into the oven at 30 degrees to rise for one hour. Okay so I've set my oven to 30 degrees and I've put the bread in and it's going to rise for one hour before I fold it. So I'll set my timer for one hour and then we'll come back. Okay, it's been proving for an hour, so I've taken it out of the oven and now I'm going to fold it three times. I've wet my hands so that it doesn't stick. So you take an end and you flip it over. Take an end, flip it over. And you go sideways, flip into thirds, and then one more time from the top and bottom, like so. And then you just take it and plunk it down so the seam is underneath. Just gently squish it. You're not wanting to actually knock all the air out because you're wanting those beautiful bubbles to develop. So lid back on. Now back in the oven for another 30 minutes to prove. Okay, so it's second proving. And it's looking fluffier so again I'm going to do the folding three times sides into the center more. You can see it's becoming much more bubbly and rubbery flip it over gently push into the sides so I'm going to give that now another 30 minutes so back in the oven dough has just come out of the oven it's been in there for that extra 30 minutes so now I'm going to get my bannetons ready I like to use these um, wicker ones from Germany but you can use any basket or even a bowl if you line it with a cloth first so I'm going to flour it just sprinkling the flour around into the grooves if you've never used a banneton before they do take a little while to prove or season rather with um, the flour until they stop sticking but once they have done they're just great and I love the pattern that they leave on the sides so it's all floured up I'm going to get two decent sized loaves out of my mixture of dough so now I'm just using my scraper to clear the bench and I'm going to oil it box here, that lid off before my hands get oily. So this is what the dough is looking like. So I'm just going to wipe that oil around. I prefer to oil rather than use flour because um, I don't want it to dry out too much. So I'm just tipping that out as it just rolls out. So I want to handle it quite gently now because again I'm not wanting to um, knock out any of the air. So I'm just going to rub some oil onto my scraper and I'm cutting the dough in half and then I'm going to do my folding again. So once, turn it, twice, turn it and already the gluten is sort of starting to rest and holding itself and then I'm just going to turn it to tuck under the seam and I can see there's all beautiful air bubbles if they're too big I just pinch them just so they just deflate a bit so I'll do this one turning it and the third fold and turning it over so the seams underneath and by using the heel of my hand I can just twist it and turn it and tuck it under now I'm going to flour these two, so sprinkling 
flour on and just gently rubbing that in. More. And that also will help prevent the dough from sticking to the banneton. And then again, just using the heel of my hand to tuck that seam under and you can see it's becoming a beautiful ball. Perks it up a bit too. So when I'm happy with my balls, they're going to go into the baskets. So there's one, tuck, put that in. And the second one. And so you have the seam up because we're going to flip those over. So a little bit of more flour on top. Now this needs to prove for another 50 minutes. So I'm going to put it into my oven again for 30 minutes and then I will take it out and I'm going to then preheat my oven for 20 minutes with Dutch ovens in it. I'll get back to you then. My bread has now had about 30 minutes in the oven and it's time to preheat the oven. So I'm going to take it out and there are my lovely loaves. And I like to cook them in Dutch ovens. So I've got two loaves, I've got two Dutch ovens. One is this heavy cast iron one that I take camping. And the other is a Le Creuset that um, I've had forever. So they both work equally well. So put that in. So now I'm going to change the setting to my oven. I'm going to set it to 225 degrees and I will give that 20 minutes to heat up and then we will do the loaf. While that's cooking I just wanted to tell you about what I'm wearing. This is my Marnie corset apron. I love this design. It's got boning through these bias binding seams and it stays up all on its own and I don't have to have any pressure around my neck at all and it's cool. Plus it looks great if you're having a dinner party because it's a little bit fancy. It's even got little side pocket and I'm wearing it with the bandana that comes with the Phoebe Bigger Than Tucker overalls. So my oven is hot and the bread is ready to go in so I'm just going to show you a couple of techniques of how to finish this off. So I use baking paper uh, which makes it easy to put the bread into the Dutch oven and also put it out. So I pop that over the basket and take a tray so I can flip it over. And then while it's on the tray, I can just sort of shuffle it around a little bit and take the basket off. And there's the dough looking beautiful. Now what you can do is just smooth the flour out. And if you want to actually create a design, you can take some flour and sprinkle a little bit more on. And then just sort of rub it gently to make a nice smooth surface and then you can use something like a piece of string or a dental floss anything you like and you can sort of design some um, guidelines so I'm just going to do quite a simple one so marking it in half and then into quarters and eighths and then I like to use um, a surgical blade. You can also use a lamb, but I find for the more detailed work, a surgical blade is the best. So you want to be work quite quickly. You can see the tray is quite good for this because I can rotate it as I work. And I'm just sort of drawing a leaf design over my guides there. And then I'm just going to slash into those. And then I might just do a couple more slash marks on those quarter points, like so. Okay, that is ready to go into a Dutch oven. So I will bring the camera over. And the Dutch ovens are very hot. So I need to be careful taking them out. I will start with the black one. 
want to work quickly, so I'm going to take the lid off and get my bread. I'm holding it by the corners of the paper. I'm just going to drop that into the pan and put the lid on and get that back in the oven really quickly. So we'll come over for the other one. So again, putting a piece of paper over the top of the basket. Try over the basket. Flip it over. So I'm just going to shuffle it over slightly. So you can see it's holding its shape really nicely. This one I'm not going to flour and I'm going to use the lamb and I'm just going to do deep slashes. And the slashes are important because they allow the air to escape and the bread to actually puff up. So now I'll take the other one out. I'm going to make that a bit lower so you can perhaps see. No. And that's going to go into the oven for 25 minutes and then I will come back and take the lids off and give it another 15 minutes. Okay, so let's take the lid off the bread and have a look. Give that another 15 minutes. So while I'm waiting for the bread to cook, this is what I'm working on, my pattern making. And I do find that it really helps to uh, break up my computer time by going and doing some cooking and folding that dough. Okay, so time's up. Let's have a look. So when you're picking up the bread, hold it by the paper. You don't actually need the cloth, um, so long as you're only holding the paper. Oh, <laughs> if the paper doesn't tear, slide that off. How beautiful is that? lovely. So this is the one that was cooked in the cast iron Dutch oven and this one was cooked in the Le Creuset. And you can see the way it's split open and it's got that beautiful sheen on the crust. So we'll let that cool down and have a look and cut it open. Okay, let's cut that bread open. It just smells amazing. That beautiful crumb, nice and airy, soft, and a beautiful crust. I'm going to have some butter and jam and honey. <laughs> 